Hello everyone, my name is Jay Wingro and I am the founder and CEO of Actualize, the coding bootcamp, and the author of A Common Sense Guide to Data Structures and Algorithms. Welcome to our brand new weekly video series called Think Like a Software Engineer. We're going to train you to think like a software engineer, which is an extremely useful mindset when learning to code. We're going to cover all sorts of topics over the course of these weekly videos. We're going to talk about things like how to debug code that simply isn't working, how to read documentation, how to experiment with new technologies, how to make sense out of computer science, how to deal with frustrating error messages, how to make our code faster, how to automate the automatable, how to make the most out of our computer, and how to deal with and jump over the hurdles that software developers deal with on a daily basis. I'm really excited that you're joining me on this journey. In today's video, we're going to focus on a very intriguing topic, which is how to analyze how quickly your code runs. That is, you can write two different versions of code that accomplish the same task. However, version A might run more quickly than version B. How does a software engineer analyze that kind of thing? How do you know how quickly your code will run? So today we're going to learn about this in the context of a exercise. The exercise is going to be print out all even numbers between 2 and 100. So we're going to write code that is going to accomplish this task. It's going to print out 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, etc. up to 100. Now we're not actually going to write this using a particular programming language. Instead, we're going to do this with what is known as pseudocode. Pseudocode is basically writing instructions to a computer, but in plain English. So it's for humans to read, but it's a type of instructions that a computer would understand. Let me show you what I mean. So we're going to first do version one. That is, this is the first attempt of writing code that will accomplish this task of printing out all the even numbers. So we're going to first create a variable called number and have it hold the number one. So if you're not familiar with the concept of variables, simply put, a variable is like a box. It's a box in which you could put something inside of it. So in this case, I have a box called number and I've put the number one inside of this box. Going forward though, I will call it a variable. So I have a variable number that holds the number one. Then I will create a loop that is to run a hundred times. The concept of a loop, simply put, is everything within a loop. Any code that you put within a loop is going to run multiple times. In this case, it's going to run 100 times. So what are the instructions that I'm going to place inside of this 100 times loop? So first off, I'm going to say print number. So this is going to print whatever the contents of the number variable is. In this case, since number holds the value one, this loop is going to print the number one to the screen 100 times in a row. However, that's not exactly what we want. So next, we're going to write an additional instruction to the computer using pseudocode, and that is going to say, increase number by one. So if we follow the logic here, what's going to happen is the first time the loop runs, it's going to print one, and then number is going to become two. So now the number variable will hold the number two instead of one. Then when the loop runs again for the second time, it's going to print number, but this time number is two. So it's gonna print two to the screen and then number becomes three. The next time around it prints three to the screen and number becomes four. By the time we get through this, we're going to have effectively printed numbers one to a hundred to the screen. However, since we only want to print the even numbers between one or two and a hundred, not all the numbers, we have to add a conditional statement. So that is to say, if number is even, only then are we going to print the number to the screen. So this is our first algorithm. Again, following the logic, it's going to do this loop 100 times. Number is going to start out as one. If number is even, so in the first round of the loop, number is odd. So it's not going to print the number. Instead, it's simply going to increase the number by one. 
However, in the next round of the loop, in the second round of the loop, number, since it's two, is even, so the instructions to the computer of printing the number will take place, and so on and so forth, and effectively this code is going to print out all even numbers between two and 100. Let me now show you an alternative algorithm, which I'll call version two. I'll start out version two the same way as version one, and that I'm going to start out with a number variable that is going to hold the number one, or maybe I'll hold the number two. And then we're going to say loop 50 times. So instead of having a loop 100 times, we're going to loop 50 times. And we're going to say print number, and then increase number by two. And that is our second algorithm. Let's follow the logic of it. So number starts out as two. This loop is to run 50 times. It's going to start out by printing the number. So in this case, in the first round of the loop, it's going to print two. But then it's going to increase number by two, so number becomes four. And then the next round of the loop, it prints four, and the number becomes six, etc. And using this algorithm, we also effectively print out all the even numbers between two and 100. So while these two algorithms are definitely similar, they are not exactly the same. And now I want to pose a question to you. Which of these algorithms do you think is faster? So the answer is, is that the second version, version two is faster. Why is that? Because every step of code that a computer has to process takes a certain amount of time. How much time it takes depends on the speed and the hardware of your computer and maybe on the internet connection. But every step that occurs takes a certain actual amount of time. Since in version one, we have a loop that runs a hundred times, that means we have essentially a hundred steps that the computer has to process. That will take whatever, a hundred milliseconds or a hundred seconds or a hundred minutes, but it will take a hundred units of time. However, on that same computer, were we to run algorithm version two, since that loop only runs 50 times, it only takes 50 steps to complete that loop and thus that algorithm. So analyzing these two algorithms, we can conclude that the second algorithm is going to be significantly faster than the first one. And this is how software engineers think about their speed of code. They think about the number of steps that their code is going to take. So when a software engineer thinks about the speed of their code, they're really not taking a stopwatch and checking to see how fast their code actually runs for real. Instead, they think about the steps, the number of steps that their code takes. Thank you for joining me today, and I will see you next time.